AMD's FSR is out. I can finally talk about it. Fidelity effects super resolution. Oh, and it's gonna change the industry. It's real. And I know, I know, it seems like it's taken forever with all the poking and the prodding and the tuning and that kind of thing. But rest assured, I think AMD is gonna change the direction of the whole industry. AMD's approach with Fidelity FX Super Resolution is better because it makes more sense. But most people are probably not gonna understand that. It's a win-win here for all gaming customers, not just AMD customers. And that's the thing that sets it apart. We've got a lot to talk about and not just the benchmarks. An entire industry changes right here, today, this. This is the watershed moment. Let's unpack. Fidelity FX Super Resolution is not really trying to compete head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's DLSS 2.0. It's not really a DLSS competitor because it's a fundamentally different approach. Uh, essentially, both technologies do promise gamers to display more pixels faster with less work, less computational work, with the same visual fidelity, with comparable visual fidelity, but how they get there and how they work and where they're positioned in the industry is completely different. And the fly in the ointment of DLSS, and DLSS 2.0 especially, is that it relies on AI and some special sauce hardware that can accelerate that AI and a closed source library that is forever wedded to NVIDIA. DLSS is a cool new technology on version 2, don't get me wrong, it's, I like it, it's, I always recommend turning it on because it's free performance. I, they're both pretty good, I mean NVIDIA has the well-moneyed thing here and the research and also the first mover advantage. But as with any new technology, NVIDIA is always very careful to consider all of the options and maneuver forward with the option that is in their own best interest or the most in their own best interest I should say. So in so doing, NVIDIA has created an opportunity for AMD and Fidelity FX Super Resolution. So that's the beginning of, of a new technology. And as a gamer, even if you play on Team Green, it doesn't matter. AMD is helping you too, whether you like it or not. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird to think about. But honestly, the thing that my brain came up with that kind of has a lot of parallels here, where we are now with DLSS and Fidelity FX Super Resolution and pushing more pixels is the whole Tesla versus Edison thing and the domestication of the modern electric grid infrastructure. You know, hindsight is usually 2020, meaning that things are usually clearer in a, in a retrospective when you look back and it's like, oh yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty clear. You know, hindsight is 2020. Back when electricity was a new invention, there was of course the famous inventor Thomas Edison. He had his DC or direct current electricity. It's kind of like what you get out of a battery, a chemical reaction. Westinghouse and Tesla had AC or alternating current. And Edison, like Nvidia, had more people, smarter people, and the first mover advantage. Uh, you know, Edison acting out of his own self interest, since he had a lot of patents and devices and stuff like that, because uh, he had the head start on direct current on DC. Uh, well, and probably also Edison's own ego, simply just couldn't see that alternating current was the better choice for bringing electricity to every American. In a lot of ways, uh, Fidelity FX Super Resolution is the alternating current of this technology. It's a little bit more nuanced than that, and uh, it is a little bit newer technology than DLSS. I mean, we're on DLSS 2, but it is gonna be posted up on GPU Open, and we'll talk more about that. It does work best with newer hardware, but it can work well, shockingly well, with old hardware. I benchmark on an RX 590, an almost three-year-old card, and I was shocked how good it was. 1440p on a AAA title, modern titles, and it was fast? AMD's already let this cat out of the bag, but it bears repeating. This works fine on Team Green cards too. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> you can run AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution on a GeForce GTX that's old? Yeah, yeah, that's right. No problem. In fact, they showed it off on a GTX 1060, the most popular card on Steam. You want a game that supports this? Yeah, sure, no problem. The biggest downside is that, like DLSS, it requires the game developer to do a little bit of work to enable it. And we'll talk about that more in a sec also. Even if you don't like AMD, even if you don't intend to game with Fidelity FX Super Resolution, here is why you should support this in games uh, and ask for it in games that you play anyway. It's not proprietary. NVIDIA's executive team sets the tone 
for the whole company. And they're proud. And, you know, rightly so. They're aggressive, they're thirsty, they're clever, considered, ruthless maybe even. None of that is really a bad thing. Innovation is hard and sometimes you can, you know, get carried away. Sometimes you, you can't make a cake without breaking a few eggs. Certainly, it's certainly good to be ambitious. But to me, it seems like they're careful not to ever do anything unless it's clearly in their own best interests. DLSS on AMD, really, do you think Do you think that'll happen? Do you think we'll see DLSS or something like it on AMD? Do you think that'll be opened up? Why would you, why would you ever think that? So while we're not gonna see DLSS on any non-team green card, we probably will see Fidelity FX on Intel GPUs as well. So this technology is gonna be available on all three. <laughs> Nvidia's definitely got Edison's ego, uh, you know, from the top down, I think. At least, at least that's my own personal experience. <laughs> you know, I, they reached out a year or two ago and wanted to do a project. And I had something in mind that I wanted to do where I would show that more cores and creative workloads actually creates more demand, more pressure on VRAM and GPUs. And we went back and forth on my drafts and their feedback was mainly that it wasn't focused enough on their products because their products were only part of the story. So we didn't really move forward. Another time, an NVIDIA partner reached out and sent me an NVIDIA card for launch, but NVIDIA withheld the drivers with no explanation. Now, I'm sure it's because I'm a Z-list you know, YouTuber and I fell through the cracks because, well, I'm, you know, I'm worthless, obviously. But you don't have to rub it in. Harold Brown. That's the name of a research scientist who, at Edison's behest, electrocuted a 75-pound dog named Dash. Ugh. This was a spectacle put on for a room full of reporters. They first zapped Dash with a thousand volts of DC, but he was unharmed, completely fine. But Brown, you know, he lamented, it's like, oh, we can, we can kill Dash with only 300 volts of AC. And, and they did. Do you want AC in your home? That was the message that Brown wanted you to take home. Why does it always turn super dark on this channel? Sorry. Look, Edison was the cool dude. He didn't need to electrocute that dog. The same way that NVIDIA doesn't need to do things like the GeForce Partner Program, the GPP. Yeah, I remember that. I heard a rumor, it's just a rumor, that the GeForce Partner Program, in some form, was coming back somehow in China. Now, I'm sure that's wrong, and that such an incredibly anti-competitive move would just be well, you know what? I, I digress. Anyway, on with the benchmarks. Yeah, we're here to talk about Fidelity FX Super Resolution, right? And how it's gonna be awesome. All right, you've gotta see this. It's completely, completely nuts. Our testing here is with the ASRock Phantom Gaming 6800 XT with a Ryzen 9 5900X. Our motherboard is the ASUS ProArt B550, and we have 32 gigabytes of dual rank DDR4 3600. Anno 1800 is our first game. It's a real-time city building strategy game. Even on ultra quality, you can expect upwards of 40% performance bump at 4K. The gains at 1440p weren't quite as significant, around 24%, but still well over 120 FPS. Of course, if you drop down to Fidelity FX Super Resolution balanced quality, you could achieve 123 FPS in 4K as well. Are you not amazed? 4K and 120 FPS? I mean, just, just tweaking some software? The performance is a little variable, but essentially is free, especially when we're talking about the Fidelity FX Ultra preset. There's really not a lot of difference. Godfall is an RPG, uh, and the next title we're gonna take a look at. It's uh, sort of an action RPG, it's a lot of fun. It sees a similar boost in performance at 4K, moving from 66 FPS to about 101 FPS on ultra quality. And visually, I really don't see a difference. 1440p benefits similarly. Now, what about visual fidelity? Like I, I've mentioned that, but we really need to pixel peep and take a look, you know, through the beer goggles of the YouTube algorithm. And it's gotta come with a visual fidelity cost, right? Well, yes and no, mostly no. The visual side by side, as you can see here, with fidelity, super, fidelity FX Super Resolution on and native 4K, I'm hard pressed to see any visual difference at all. Maybe it's even slightly in favor of having FSR on versus native. Dropping down to balance, yeah, you can definitely see a difference even through the YouTube compression algorithm, I think. It's still playable and it still looks good, still looks better than native 1440p in my opinion, but uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a noticeable visual cost. Whereas on Ultra, I don't see a really a visual cost here at all. FSR can operate in balanced and ultra quality. It just depends on what your preferences are as a gamer. For my eye, even pixel peeping this stuff a single frame, I don't really see much of a difference between ultra quality and native across any of these games in 1440p and 4K. Next up is Terminator Resistance. 
a first person shooter set in a future war scenario alluded to in the Terminator franchise and the films. Fidelity FX Super Resolution Ultra moves us from 86.1 FPS of 4K to 124.3 and if anything, improves the, vi the visual fidelity with FSR on. Look at this. 1440p moves us from 174 FPS average to 228.1 on ultra and 297.4 unbalanced. These gains are not as much as we see at 4K. Sure, that's fine. But that's owing to the fact that this game is already pretty well optimized and already a pretty high frame rate. Pixel peep these screen grabs from Terminator. Look, look, for the original screen res, I actually think the far textures are sharper with Fidelity FX on. Check out the brick pattern on the wall. That's with Fidelity FX Super Resolution on. I, I think it's better. Playing the game, I had a general feeling that FSR on with Ultra was better than native overall, not just, you know, this one scene. And finally, Rift Breaker. It's a base building survival game with action RPG elements. At 4K native, it's already very playable without FSR. Many aspects of this game lend themselves to AMD's highly parallel execution and modern driver architecture. This is kind of one of the reasons that Ashes of the Singularity was popular and is sort of jokingly called Ashes of the Benchmark. But what about gains from older cards with titles like this? Can three-year-old cards similarly, you know, get swole? Now we know that Nvidia's DLSS won't work on old cards because, well, they just, they, they don't have the horsepower. Uh, just like when they introduced RTX Voice. If you want the newest cool thing, you need the newest cool cards. No RTX on your card, you got a GTX card? Well, obviously RTX Voice won't work. I mean, RTX is in the name, right? Oh, wait, that was, that was just a software lock. <laughs> uh, there's Edison's ego. Yeah, that's neat. But how can I gain the most from this again? So anyway, uh, back to Team Red. Here's the plucky little RX 590, also from ASRock. How does that fare in the benchmarks? Well, even at 4K, the RX 590 manages, after experiencing Rift Breaker at over 100 hertz, I really wouldn't want to play it for anything less than 60, and FSR Ultra gets us there. This is jaw-dropping insane performance on an RX 590. It's almost three years old. How many times have I said that now? This is black magic is what this is. And as we look at the numbers here, the biggest opportunity is to enable or improve AAA 1440p gaming on the RX 590. Would you say it's higher fidelity? <laughs> you know, because fidelity FX. <laughs> look, this is a masterclass in why market competition is so critically important to incentivize players to find the optimal solution for customers, not to find the optimal solution for their pocketbooks or their ego. Just look at this, 20, 30, 40% gains across all of the software that we've tested here that's supported. The software is very slow. Once you show customers a product and its features on a level playing field, customers are usually pretty good at picking out their own best option, picking out their own best interests. I mean, you expect the customer to be a little educated. So what are the downsides? What's the fly in our ointment? Well, there are a few that we need to talk about as I alluded to earlier in the video. Well, this works best if you want a game at 1440p and 4K. I was initially gonna say this is kinda sorta similar to Sapphire's Trix Boost on AMD GPUs, and, and in some ways it is, but this from AMD is much more advanced and has much better performance. Unlike Trix Boost, which basically just sets a custom resolution in between you know, 1440p and 4K or in between 1080p and 1440p, and then scales it up with a simple algorithm, Fidelity FX Super Resolution is actually inserted in the GPU rendering pipeline and does a lot of other sophisticated tricks, but they're not computationally expensive. It's also on GPU open, and it looks like it's going to be less headache and less, but what's in it for me uh, the, than the other solutions aimed at more pixels and less compute from a developer standpoint, so they'll have an easier time implementing it without having to get married to anybody, which is probably pretty good. For gamers, especially with these GPU shortages, uh, those implementation changes can't come fast enough on all the other games that need this. The second sticking point here is that it works best the more pixels you have. This won't give you 400 FPS at 1080p. The less pixels you have, the less you're able to upscale well. So that's why it shines best at 1440p and 4K if that's the target resolution you want to game at. It's cool as beans. This technology works as well as it does even on three plus year old graphics cards. As long as that graphics card was pretty powerful back then, owing to the, you know, don't try to 
run 720p and upscale to 1080p. I don't think it works as well in those scenarios. Truly, this is a gift for gamers, though. No matter how you play, every gamer's gonna benefit. Even console players, even Intel. Mark my words. So thank you for that, AMD. And thank you for opening your invention to the world on GPU Open. This has been the quickest look I know how to do at Fidelity FX Super Resolution. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you like what you saw, you know, maybe do an update, come hang out in the forums. Love to hear from you. Post pictures, success stories, screenshots, a lot of other benchmarks, a lot of other videos dropping today. This has been amazing. I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out, and I'll see you in the level one forums.